I wrote a screenplay in 48 hours. I started with absolutely no idea what I was going to do and went all the way to a full draft. And in this video, I'm gonna show you everything. I'm gonna show you my initial ideas, my outlines, the problems I faced, and even the full script. You'll get to see it all. Let's begin. I knew I couldn't just sit down, open up Final Draft, and start typing. That would end in disaster. I needed a plan. I split my process into three phases. Finding an idea, outlining, and writing. I felt that finding an idea and outlining would likely be the more important parts, but actually writing the script would take the most time. My plan was to spend the first few hours finding an idea, then moving to the outline. I likely needed a detailed outline. The more detailed the outline, the easier it would be to keep moving through the pages of the script. Once I finished the outline, I would spend the rest of my time writing the script. I needed to choose a concept that would work with my time constraint. I couldn't write anything that required a ton of research. This meant no historical fiction, nothing based on a true story, and preferably in a setting I could create from scratch. I figured something simple and focused was the way to go. My first idea was to write some sort of contained thriller. I've written thrillers in the past, so I had a pretty good idea of what to expect. Writing a contained thriller would mean that the script could revolve around a few central characters in one general location. I wouldn't have to constantly be thinking about new settings. This would be helpful. Constantly stopping to add new characters and settings would likely make finishing the script impossible given the time constraint. Next, I listed out a few different ideas for the setting. Whatever came to mind, I wrote down. After a couple minutes of letting my mind run, here's what I had. From this little list, I was interested mainly in writing something on an island or maybe in space. I decided to go with space and continued to brainstorm. My first thought was an ensemble of characters who fight a monster loose on a spaceship, but I immediately thought of Alien and wanted to do something different. I also decided I wanted to stay away from a monster-based thriller. While these can be great stories, it just wasn't as interesting to me. A human versus human story sounded more compelling. Also, instead of a spaceship, I decided the story should take place on the moon at some sort of moon base. Here's a picture of my initial brainstorms. Please ignore my doodling, it helps me think. As you can see, I went from thriller all the way down to a sci-fi thriller that takes place on the moon. At this point, I added in a science versus military element. I thought maybe some sort of struggle could occur between the scientists and the military personnel who were packed together on this moon base. I also jotted down some notes at the bottom about how the characters might change over the course of the story. At this point, I had my idea. My story was going to be a sci-fi thriller that took place on a futuristic moon base. I started thinking about why this base would exist. What would the scientists be researching? How would it be valuable? Maybe something was found under the moon's surface, I thought, like some sort of lunar bacteria. And maybe it had major healing properties and medical applications back on Earth. Then I started thinking about where the conflict could start. Maybe different nations all work together at this base. Maybe one of the nations tries to take the harvested bacteria for themselves or for their country. This gave me some loose ideas for the initial setup and structure of the story. At this point, I felt like it was time to head to the whiteboard and brainstorm some of the structural beats of the story. If you've been following this channel, you may have heard me talking about Dan Harmon's Story Circle. i found that it's been very helpful in building the initial building blocks and momentum of my stories. Harmon's Story Circle is a fantastic tool to help break down the initial idea of your story and give it some hooks to hang ideas on in a way that fits in a dramatic narrative. Using this, I could create a rough idea of where the story would go and what kind of turning points would make it dramatically compelling. If you want to know more about Dan Harmon's story circle, I'll link to it in the description. My main character would be one of the scientists working at the base. He or she would be working hard to make a major discovery. At this point, I wasn't sure what the discovery would be. They would then enter an unfamiliar situation when more military personnel were inexplicably brought to the base. I used numbers 5 and 6 on the story circle to give the story a strong midpoint. 
the main character would find what they were looking for, but this would result in a major catastrophe. So a major discovery would be made at the midpoint, followed by the antagonist taking control of the moon base. This would set up the second half of the story, where the main character would have to find a way to regain control. So what I'm making here is super, super general. I'm using terms like bad guys and good guys. I don't want the characters to be that simple, but for this, it helps me to get an idea just to like throw something down because for this, a lot of this is about throwing something down, getting a decent idea, and then perfecting that idea as I go. Once I had this general idea, I used the story circle to give some structure to each section of the story. Act one, act two, part one, act two, part two, and act three. I focused on what the main character would want in each section and what they are trying to get. I also focused on what it costs to get what they want. What reaction does the environment or the antagonist have to the main character as they go after what they want? Here's what I wrote down. In Act 1, the scientist is focusing on making a major discovery. The unfamiliar situation comes when a major breakthrough is made. As they get close to a major discovery, unexpected military personnel come to the base. Act 2 Part 1 mainly dealt with the making of the major discovery. In Act 2 Part 2, the main characters want changes. Rather than trying to make a major discovery, they are trying to regain control of the base. I wanted the first half of Act 2 to propel us to the midpoint and create a major obstacle for the second half of the story. Act 3 was simply about the main character regaining control of the base and defeating the story's antagonist. All of this was very vague, but it helped me get some ideas on how I might build out the structure of this story. For this project, I preferred to nail down some ideas on how the story would evolve and change first. Doing this would prevent me from writing a story that was way too long or way too short. I didn't have the luxury of adding or subtracting massive portions of the story if I was going to finish the draft in two days. Okay, so at this point, I feel like I need to work on my characters because I haven't worked on them at all. So, using this story circle, it gives me a very, very rough outline of, of what my story is going to look like. Now I need to think more about my characters and need to think more about, you know, the details of this. Remember that I decided that multiple nations would be sharing this base and working together for a common goal, which was to make this major medical discovery that would help people back on Earth. My characters became an ensemble of different scientists and soldiers from different nations. I gave the characters different motivations and beliefs that could conflict and change over the course of the story. One thing that was especially helpful is that for a few of the characters, I gave them a story arc. Through the events of the story, I could create change in the beliefs of the characters, which would create a much more compelling story. This would give meaning to the major turning points of the story. They wouldn't just create more obstacles for my characters. They would force the characters to confront their own beliefs and ideas about the world. If you would like to stop and read about some of the characters I created, you can pause the video now. So now I have some characters some general ideas on what they're going to be. Now I'm going to do some backstory and some world building. And then I'm going to start writing this story. After writing out a general story structure, building out my characters, and doing a bit of world building, it was finally time to write the outline. I needed to have an outline that worked. Too much pausing to fix story problems, and this thing would never get done. If I could get an outline that worked, in theory, it wouldn't take me too long to get through the first draft. I combined my characters with the general story structure I had made earlier, and was able to create an outline that summarized the major events that would occur in each section of the story. Just like on the whiteboard, I split the story into the four major sections and focused on writing out the major scenes and turning points that would take place. While I didn't have a scene-by-scene -scene outline, what I had focused on the major turning points that would need to happen, as well as establishing and evolving the different relationships between the characters. Once I finished the outline, 
I was finally ready to write the first draft. Now at this point, rather than sitting down and beginning to write the first draft, I went on a walk. I'd like to tell you that I did this to feel inspired or to generate new ideas, but the reality is I was worried that this was going to be bad. I was worried I was about to put out an absolute piece of garbage to thousands of people who had subscribed to my YouTube channel. I was worried that I wouldn't even be able to finish. So I procrastinated. But luckily, I had a deadline. Love them or hate them, deadlines force us to get things done. So after about a half hour or so of procrastination, I began the first draft. Getting pages out can be tough, but the key is focus. I didn't have my phone on my desk. I wasn't letting anyone walk in and out of the room. I didn't check emails, I didn't open Twitter, and I left Facebook alone. Occasionally, my camera stopped recording, but I wouldn't get up to restart them. It wasn't about forcing myself to focus as much as it was not making distractions easily accessible. When you can find that groove and actually get yourself to focus and you don't allow yourself to be distracted, you'd be surprised at how much you can write. After writing for a while, I took a break, got a coffee, thank you, came back and went right back to writing. I continued pushing through pages. I took another break, grabbed some dinner, yes, thank you, and came right back. These occasional intentional breaks allowed my mind to breathe for a minute. My subconscious was given the chance to get ahead of me in the story. While I was grabbing coffee or eating dinner, my mind was given the time to get a few pages in front of me. It was 1 a.m and I was exhausted. I had gone from having no idea to 35 pages written of a first draft. I was pretty happy with what I'd done, and I headed to bed. Day two, I got up and started writing again. I was feeling good and ready to finish out this first draft. All right, day two, it's 9.02 a.m. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but I woke up feeling kind of sick today. But that's okay, I'm feeling energized and I'm gonna pound this out, get it done, and it'll be great. But only a couple hours into writing, I got stuck. I kept hitting roadblocks. I had the story beats I wanted to write, but the story wasn't flowing. It was nearing noon and I felt like I was running out of time. I decided to create a scene-by-scene -scene outline. This would allow me to flow between scenes more easily while writing and hopefully create less stopping and starting. But this didn't seem to help. I kept getting stuck. Every time I sat down to write, I saw everything that I hated in the story. I was barely getting pages out. I was completely self-conscious and unable to write anything without judging it. I honestly thought it was over. I wasn't gonna be able to do it. I was only 40 pages in and I absolutely hated it. I questioned the entire story, and even this entire challenge of writing the script in 48 hours. I kept rewriting the first act, which I knew I shouldn't be doing, but I kept doing it anyway. I kept wanting this first draft to be perfect. I was about to share it to thousands of people on YouTube. I felt like I had to give you this perfect, Oscar-winning screenplay. Then I remembered what the purpose of this was. It wasn't to write the perfect screenplay. It wasn't about getting you all to think I'm some great writer. The purpose of this challenge was to show you that it's possible to get your first draft out onto the page if you allow yourself the time to focus and get it done. I wanted to show you that you didn't need years, months, or even weeks to get that first draft out onto the page. And so I kept writing, knowing I was going to be showing you something that wasn't my best work, knowing there were things I wasn't going to be proud of. But I continued, because I want you to keep pushing too. I deleted some pages that weren't working and kept pushing forward. This time I was going to push to the end. No more rewriting to get perfect pages. I was able to start really getting pages out when I stopped worrying about every single piece being good. I just focused on telling the story. It's not good to be super self-conscious while you're writing that first draft. Focus on telling the story. Focus on writing a scene that feels like something you'd want to see. Focus on who your characters are. 
The goal is to be so immersed in the actual writing that you don't have the time to constantly judge every single line you write. It was late. I was 73 pages in, with a few hours left, before I hit the 48 hour deadline. I decided to grab a few hours of sleep before I got up at 6am to finish out the script. I had done it. A full first draft in 48 hours. There were a few points along the way where I wasn't sure if I would get it done, but I forced myself to stick with it and finish. This is still a first draft. It's far from perfect and it definitely needs rewriting, but it's a first draft I wrote in 48 hours while battling a cold. So I'll take it. Now if I wanted to, I could actually rewrite. Not a scene here or there, not a single act, a full screenplay. You can write that first draft in as little as a few days. When you get that story out, it gives you something to rewrite. It gives you something to fix. As long as the story stays in your head or in your outline, it's not real. When you get it out onto the page, you can actually see all of its holes and problems. And then you can face them head on and find ways to solve them. Speed through your first draft, then rewrite slowly. It can be difficult and you will get in your own head about your writing, but you just have to push through and get that first draft out onto the page. You can't edit something that isn't written. You need to know where the holes in your story are, and the best way to find them is to finish your draft. If you're interested in improving your focus and want more tools to help you get your first draft out onto the page, then I recommend checking out the Practical Screenwriting course. This course is made up of online videos packed with information that is guaranteed to help you build long-term focus and consistency so you can beat procrastination and writer's block and get your story out on paper. And once you finish that first draft, the course shows you how to rewrite your draft so that you can easily find and fix your story's problems. At seven hours long, this course is more than double the length of the average masterclass course. If you join, the course comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, which is 100% for any reason at all. I wanna make sure that every single member truly feels that they're getting a ton of value from the course. So if you wanna check the course out, go ahead and click the link on screen now or below in the description. I've had more than 100 members join this course and get a ton out of it, and I'd love for you to do the same. Either way, I hope this video inspired you to get your screenplay out of your head and onto the page. I'll see you next time.